Revelation 13 is a time in the Bible we know as a great tribulation. That's better. Thank you. Nothing from Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 on has ever happened. The false teachers who try to put all that in the past are just that, false teachers. They know not where they speak, neither whereof they affirm. Amen. Nothing from Revelation 4.1 on has ever happened. If you want to know where you're at on God's calendar, you're in the last verse of chapter, uh, chapter 3. Uh, the Laodicean church that was miserable, poor, wretched, blind, and naked. That's where you are. Chapter 4, verse 1, things change. You see the word church, 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 church about 20 times, chapters 1, 2, and 3. In chapter 4, verse 1, the church disappears. The word church is not mentioned again in the book of Revelation till the end when the Lord comes back. So we need to know where we are in this scripture. We all know there's an antichrist, right? Everybody knows antichrist is coming. They talk about it out there in the world. They talk about it on TV now. They talk about it in secular media now, the antichrist and the Illuminati and all the Bilderbergers and the Rothschilds and the conspiracy theorists. And there is definitely a conspiracy. There's no doubt about it. And the devil is the chief conspirator. And he's the one that's got it going. The people involved in the conspiracy. The reason they don't believe in it, they don't even know they're in it. A lot of them. And there's a conspiracy run by Satan to mess this world up. Now, I, I, people ask me, they say, now, Danny, if the devil knows the Bible and he reads the end of it, how come he don't, why is he cooperating? Well, he's, he's God's foreknowledge told what would happen. And the devil is so crooked, he thinks he can still win. That's how evil Satan is. So that's why he's fitting into the plan. You're not going to beat God. When that book says it, buddy, you better get out of the way. Get with the program. It'll run over you. Now, tonight, in the, in the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to be able to do great and wonderful things. Call down the fire from heaven. Uh, me and Brother Dennis was talking about it one day. and You think that he doeth great wonders. Miracles, you talk about miracles in front of your face. He'll do all kinds of them. Now, let's just suppose somebody says, Well, how's the world going to follow the Antichrist? Because of those miracles that he did. They're going to think he's of God because of the miracles. Miracles are not a proof it's God. The devil will have power then to do miracles. And he calls down fire in the sight of men. If, if, the, if the Antichrist came out and there was a big emergency and the whole world was willing to give up their liberties and there's a one world government and a one world monetary system and a one world religion and a one world leader, then all of a sudden that leader says, I can cure cancer. All you have to do is take this mark. There'd be, well, there'd, be no, there'd be no debate about it. He'll be able to deceive the world by means of those miracles which he did, which he does. God will allow him to do that. Now look in chapter 13 what he, what he does. Verse 15, and he had power to give life under the image of the beast. There's a lot of debate about what that is. Image, image that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And then they get the mark down there in verse, uh, the next two verses, the 666. In the book of Daniel, when Daniel is describing the world worshiping the Antichrist, they had six instruments, music. I'm not going to preach a sermon on music. Y'all done heard me do that a lot. Although you've got to understand music is one of the devil's major tools. God loves and created and uses music. And the devil, it's just like natural love, sexual love, all that kind of stuff. God made that good, but look what the devil's took and done with it. God made music good, look what the devil's took and done with it. 
Now, I, I ain't going to preach a sermon on music. We ain't got time for that. This is something else. I am going to show you a terrible uh, concert, beginning of a concert in just a minute. But people, uh, let me see this. Can you turn this thing on just a second? I, was, I did not plan to do this, but I just wanted to, is this thing on? Uh, I want to show you something. I get so tired and of everywhere I go, people trying to tell me that music does not matter. <laughs> you ever heard nobody preach with something in their mouth? Uh, I'm back right there for a little bit. But it does. It does. I don't know if it's on or not, Kelly. Now, I, look, I, this thing might not be in tune, but if you heard a man do this, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves. To talking, the guy said, We got a Christian rapper coming to our church. I said, What? There ain't no such thing. And he got mad. He got mad at me. He said, No, it, the music doesn't matter, it's the words that are important. Now, that's what people say when they really love rock music and want to listen to it and make an excuse to get to listen to it. Amen. See, it, music don't matter. It's the word. Same words. Same words. stupid that sounds. Didn't you feel, you, you are not dumb enough to tell me you can't tell the difference in that and it, all that matters is the words. You ain't that dumb. You're that crooked. You're wicked. If I had time, I could think you up some good ones. You can do it like this. Amazing grace, how sweet sound that saved a wretch like me and you. I want to see, that's the re retardedest thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I, I've had it, I get it up to here, but you don't understand. We have to have their kind of music to reach them. Uh uh, uh uh. No, no, no. God never ever says, bring them down to their level. Never. Never. Our job ain't to make God look cool. Our job not to make God look hip. Our job is to preach and exalt the name of Jesus Christ and let the Holy Ghost draw men in. And that will stand when the world's on fire. And you know, I, I'm going to preach on that. I get in a bad mood. Tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to show you what I think is one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen in my life. It's a dance rock concert event they have in the Netherlands every year called Climax. Let me show you how the concert opens up. You know, when we come to church, we all sing the victory in Jesus. That brings the Spirit of God in and because we want God to work in people's hearts. You know what they do at that place? They cause the image of the beast that should both speak and as many as would not worship the image of the beast would be killed. Now, tonight, what I do with that little remote control I laid there. Uh, tonight, I want to show you something. And it's just going to be about six minutes here. And then I'm going to show you what's going to happen at the end of the tribulation. 
Okay? Watch this. Get my lights as soon as I get sound. What you're getting ready to see absolutely shocked me silly. This is in the Netherlands. You know this stuff in Sweden and Denmark and Norway? You know all that stuff? It comes, starts over there, then it comes here. Jumps the pond and goes to California and then works its way back to us. You ought to thank God in heaven tonight that you're a part of an old-fashioned, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. They're dying out. They're dying out. This modern junk is taken over and appeals to the flesh. No crucifixion of the flesh. No denying the flesh. If they sing music like I did a while ago, ask, what does it mean come out from the world and be separate? What does that mean? Watch this tonight. If I can get a picture here, boys, get me plenty of volume, and I want you to watch this. Unbelievable. about the image of the beast. What they're saying is this Lord ruled the earth four and a half billion years ago. That's what they believe. And tonight the door will be open for him to come in and meet these people. They're chosen people, thousands of them, that get to meet the Lord that runs the world. Guess who? some MC, Master of Ceremonies, that he represents the Lord Satan. Watch him. Tonight, he is our Master of Ceremony, and he has been given the name of Ruffian. Anybody know what that means? Ruffian. It means rowdy, wicked, rebellious, blasphemy, the most wicked person alive. That word does. I've been chosen to get the demons and exclude the angels. So we don't want no angels in here, just demons. That my boys got at you. No one has seen the face of the dark side before. No few souls are strong enough to look into his eyes. But uh, if you think you are one of them, get ready. For he is here. Son, that's when I'd run out of there like a scalded dog. You say, oh, that's just entertainment, preacher. You're crazy. You're crazy. The Bible said the Antichrist will make an image and cause that image to speak. You say, oh, that's not the real devil. That's what he wants you to think. Then the real devil really does speak to you. Listen to this. What about that? It's at a concert, people. The first demon to perform on the altar of the dark side is a ghost who has haunted the dance floors for many years. Are you aware of the same man today? 
You know why we don't have all that here in the United States out in the open? We got it here. Because there's enough Bible preaching churches to keep it beat down. That's the same spirit Katy Perry, Miley Cyrus, Jay-Z, Beyonce, every one of them's hooked into the same, they're all members of the same bunch. He said, the Lord's going to let you experience your own darkest emotions. Smoke pot, lust, sexual, drugs. It's overpowering. It's no charge. That is the name of their concerts every year. What about that? Say, preacher, is the devil real? Yes, you better believe that Satan's real. He's not a little man running around with a pitchfork and two horns laughing at people. He's trying to damn your soul to hell and laugh at you forever and ever and ever. He's in the earth. In the air. Glides on water. Blows in the wind. Burns in the flames. The Lord's next performers under his the power of the and try to escape its wrath. Their job is to enchant large crowds with penetrating sounds and piercing leaves. He said the Lord wants these people to get large crowds, concerts, with penetrating sounds and loud noises. Them people's being indoctrinated, buddy. He wants to influence the weak-minded. He finds a person in a youth group that don't really pay attention and don't really read the Bible and picks them off. He finds you that just sort of play around with God. When everybody's moving and getting right with God, you sort of act like you're going along with it. But deep down inside, you know you're not right. You're the one he's after. Listen. What's it make for the Bible? That's after it's over, and they're telling them to leave. You were doomed before you got here. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this. See, the Bible talks about signs, as I preached the other night at our church, and it talks about what we know, tsunamis. When there's a great, mighty earthquake under the ocean, it creates a tidal wave 
And one of these days, probably, there'll be some kind of asteroid or something hit that ocean and there's going to be a tsunami like the world's never seen. You see, God is looking down on this world. He sees the blasphemy. He sees the way that people make fun of him. He sees the way we just completely disregard his day, go to the mountains, go to the beach, could not care less about our, sin, our sinful condition. He sees the way we, our kids are going wild. He sees the way that things go in our life. And the whole time, the devil just working and working and working and working and working. And then one day that thing's going to hit. God's going to take his church out of this world. And the Bible said all hell's going to break loose. The Antichrist is going to come. He's going to start this mess in this world. He'll cause all to have a mark on their forehead or on in their right hand. And brother, when that day comes, people will begin to cry. The wrath of God will be poured out on this earth. They'll cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them. People will beg God, no, God cuss him, hold their fist up in his face, and the wrath of God is coming on this earth. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. This ain't no joke. You say, well, Brother Danny, that scares me. You know what you need to do? You need to get up here and get your heart right. Amen. Quit trying to fool everybody. And you know good and well down inside, you're wicked as a devil himself. You better get it right. Because now you're going to see what's going to happen when the Lord gets tired of looking at it. It's called the wrath of God. And when he finally lets go, buddy, you don't want to be in the way. And he's already done this to some cities like Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he's going to do it to Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Nashville, Charlotte, Dallas, every city you can imagine, God's going to have the last say. Watch this. You see that wave? A, a hundred foot tidal wave can do a lot of damage, brother. A hundred foot tidal wave will knock over buildings. It's coming one of these days. It's going to happen just like God said at the beach in New York City, in San Francisco. It's going to take place just like God said, just like God said, just like God said. Then they'll run and they'll cry and they'll scream and they'll beg God for another chance. But it ain't too, it's too late then to call. It's too late then to pray. Too late then to ask him for help. The wrath of God will be poured out on this earth. There was already one flood. Then God said they'll turn it loose again one day. The world won't be destroyed with a flood. It'll be fire. But there's going to be a great one at the end of that tribulation and tsunamis and wrath upon the people that took the mark of the beast and worshiped the devil. Watch it now. You think of the office parties. You think of the, the off deals of men out on the street buying a prostitute. You think of the gays and the, and the adulterers and the drunkards out there laughing at God and laughing at the Bible. They won't be laughing then, brother. They won't be making fun of him then, brother. It won't be laughing at people that shout then. Won't be making fun of the old fashioned preaching then. Brother, that shoe's gonna be on the other foot. It's gonna come one day. Ah, my, 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 my. Think about that. Preacher, is that really going to happen? Sure is. Before God sets the world on fire. Before he sets the world on fire. Bible said it's appointed a man once to die. After this, the judgment. 
The Bible said, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he'll have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible said, Repent and believe the gospel. Turn to the Lord Jesus with all of your heart tonight. Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another hour. Get it right with God tonight before it's too late. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late one day. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. It's going to be too late one day. Lord have mercy. The party's over then, brother. The party's over then. The Late Night Show, HBO, VH1, MTV, Hollywood, Atlanta, it'll all be over then. It's like God said. It's like God said. Ices will be gone. Every minute a soul goes to hell. While we've been in here tonight, young people your age have went to hell. While we've been here tonight, kids your age and went to hell. They fall screaming. You never get out. You don't ever get out. You burn forever. You hear me? You hear me? You burn forever in hell. And you burn and you burn and you burn and you burn forever and ever and ever and ever if you're not saved by God's grace. There's your only hope. The lovely Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, let his blood be shed on the cross for your sin. Come on, brother. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen. When God let them do that to his son, it was not in vain. Amen. He was not wasting his time. You know, you say, well, God's too good to do that to the world. Look what they've done to his son. Amen. The wrath of God's going to fall, y'all. The wrath of God's coming down on this world. And your only hope is to be saved and know it. Y'all, girls, you ready to sing? God's speaking to your heart tonight. If you're here tonight and you don't know 100% that if Jesus come back tonight, you'd go to heaven. I'd get down here tonight and I'd fix that thing, buddy. I'd fix it tonight. I'd fix it.